Donc pour les gens qui nous rejoignent présentement, je vais vous laisser savoir. On laisse un petit peu de temps aux, aux gens de nous rejoindre. So for those who are uh, getting online with us right now, we're just giving it a couple uh, minutes to make sure that we have everyone join before we start the webinar. Okay, so we're now uh, live again for this presentation uh, this afternoon. Uh, we already had a presentation with uh, JSA uh, this week, uh, but it was in French, so now it's uh, time for the English one. Um, I just want to thank again Quanex uh, as presenting sponsor, uh, and just want to let you know that uh, if you have any questions, use the Q&A button or uh, the raise and uh, function. Uh, and we'll be streaming this presentation on YouTube also as a special presentation. So, uh, Martin, up to you. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, my uh, webinar. Thanks uh, to Stéphane and Fenestration Canada uh, for the invite uh, this week. Uh, so as Stéphane said, we already did a French presentation uh, earlier this week. Uh, this one is gonna be uh, in English. Uh, title of the presentation is The Factory of the Future Within, within Our Reach. Uh, the reason behind this, uh, this title is uh, that we have a lot of uh, questioning that comes from customer in the last uh, few months. Uh, people are questioning what technologies are out there and uh, a lot of uh, those people are thinking that uh, the technologies are really more advanced when you're looking out in uh, Europe. Uh, but when uh, we sit down and, uh, and uh, explain what we can do for them, uh, people are soon realizing that uh, those technologies are really there for us as well. Uh, so I'm just going to go through uh, different stages of uh, your factory, uh, tell you what uh, we can do at different stages, different size of companies as well. And uh, if you have uh, listened already to our latest uh, webinars, uh, this is gonna be uh, a little bit of the same information and a little bit of new information as well. Uh, I'm redoing the whole thing because uh, obviously we're doing this for Fenestration Canada this week. Uh, so I wanted to start and do the whole uh, working plan instead of uh, just uh, using one step uh, like I'm doing in the different webinars. So uh, first step, uh, if we're uh, looking at uh, what I, we're going to be viewing today, so overview of existing automation for North American window manufacturing uh, from cutting to assembly. Uh, this also applies to patio doors. This also applies to uh, tilt and turn windows, so European style windows. Just a little difference here and there. Uh, but if you do have questions, please uh, feel free to uh, ask your question live. I'll do my best to answer uh, as you're asking them. Uh, so optimization of heading times and uh, hardware prepositioning uh, is gonna be uh, today's uh, subject. So first, uh, first stage, obviously uh, cutting and fabrication. If you're uh, looking at a smaller factory, uh, like we have a lot in uh, Quebec, uh, maybe you're, you're gonna be looking at separate workstation. Uh, so on the screen here is just an example of uh, a regular double miter saw uh, capable of uh, cutting two parts at the time. And uh, a, a standalone uh, fab center Fab center in, in there, you're going to be able to do, uh, if you're looking at sashes, you're going to be able to do all your uh, hardware pre-location. Uh, the only thing you're not going to be able to do in, in one of those would be uh, drainage if you're looking at casement sashes. But if you're looking at uh, hung in sliders, you're going to be able to do even up to uh, your drainage as well. If you're looking at uh, working with frames, you're gonna be able to do, again, everything but drainage uh, on, on those. Uh, 
there's a there's a lot you can do uh, when you're when you're thinking about different uh, workstations like that. Uh, you can uh, help really help with your ergonomic of your factory if you're taking away some of those uh, hardware pre-location from the assembly tables from your employees. Uh, you're avoiding a lot of mistakes that way. So it could be something uh, to keep in mind, even though you, you would be a um, much smaller fabricator. And uh, the uh, other way you can use one of those uh, uh, fab center would be for your uh, assembly of your uh, mullion. So you could, uh, instead of using an end mill and a copy router, you could be using one of those, putting the bar in, cutting both ends with uh, a cutter stack, and uh, at the same time going in there uh, doing your lock, doing uh, pre-location of uh, your uh, locks and, and everything. So there's a lot that can be done on uh, those uh, workstation uh, for, again, for, I would say, much smaller fabricator. If you're looking more at uh, the, the other side of the screen, then that would be uh, saw with uh, integrated uh, machining center. Uh, those saws are really for uh, the IB behind it is really to have only one uh, workstation. So one employee loading and the other another employee unloading. Those saws are uh, now capable of uh, working at the same flow as uh, a high speed welder. So if you're looking at uh, welding 400 squares, plus or minus 400 squares, you're going to be now able to cut those 400 uh, squares and, and uh, fabricate them as well at uh, the same speed. So there's been a lot of uh, advance uh, in that technology as uh, in the last few years, we can, when the high-speed welders came, first came out, uh, the, we were seeing a, a lack of uh, cutting capacity versus uh, welding capacity. So even some places they had to get two, uh, two different saws to be able to feed uh, only one welder, uh, if you're thinking high-speed welders. Uh, so now just uh, keep in mind that those technologies are out there. Uh, you're gonna be looking at uh, also what we now call high-speed saws. Uh, so thinking about high-speed saws, uh, you do not have to have fab on those. Uh, you could also be uh, only cutting. Uh, so why would, why would you go only cutting? Is that if you do have a line, uh, um, pass-through line behind uh, your saw that does all the fab on it, you do not have to do any uh, prefab. So you would be looking at a high-speed saw. So two different types of saw where you're gonna be having, uh, you're gonna be cutting either one bar at a time which is going to bring you to your goal of 400 squares uh, on a shift. Or if you're cutting uh, uh, two bars at a time, you're going to be able to uh, actually uh, feed two welders or one double stack welder uh, for somewhere around 800 squares in uh, one eight hour shift. So there, as I said, there's been a lot of uh, advancement in uh, those uh, SAWS technology. Uh, so just uh, keep an eye on those if uh, SAW is... Uh, your bottleneck at this point. If I'm uh, making my way down the, the factory, uh, if you're looking at uh, uh, welders, uh, so uh, first first thing to have in mind, uh, high-speed welders, if you do not have one uh, at this point while you're working with a conventional welder or a two-point welder, uh, the biggest advantage behind uh, high-speed welders would be uh, obviously capacity as you're working at just about twice as fast as a conventional welder. Uh, high precision, uh, high precision, where am I going with that? So uh, if you're thinking about a 1000 millimeters or one meter uh, uh, frame or sash, uh, you're gonna be cutting it, it a little bit longer. So to 1006 millimeters, burning three millimeters on each side. And then you're gonna have your uh, 1000 by 1000 at the end. But for all the good reasons, uh, you could be having uh, problems with your saw, you're cutting too high or too low. Well, high-speed welders do have ser servo motors in them now that uh, they are actually measuring all the parts that are coming into your welder. So for, let's say for any reason, you would have a 1008 part 
uh, the welder is going to know that the part is too long and it's going to burn off the extra millimeters on each side to uh, end up with your 1000 uh, measure at the end. So it's uh, really uh, helping when you're going to be down your assembly lines where you're going to be integrating your sash into your uh, frame or uh, the glass into your sash. If you do have it, those exact measurements every single time, it's going to make your life a lot easier. Uh, there's also possibilities of uh, data transfer. Uh, so if you're using the same data that the welder is taking at measuring parts, uh, it's going to be measuring the final product that comes out of it as well. So uh, thinking that you could be sending some live information to, uh, let's say, your uh, glazing, glaze stop uh, cutter, you could be sending a live uh, cutting list to it. So you would know exactly what size you would have to cut your glaze stops uh, measured on the window that you're assembling. So again, if I'm using that 1000 uh, millimeters example, uh, well, your glass top is gonna have to be, let's say 990, but if the, the window at the end is really 999, well, this, the welder is gonna send the information to that saw, making sure that the glass top is shorter as well. So it fits, in, it fits right in. Uh, you could be using uh, those data transfer as well. Uh, if you're building, uh, let's say hybrid windows, if you're uh, doing uh, some uh, wood extensions, uh, any, any type of uh, measurements that you're gonna be taking on the window, uh, normally, you could be sending that information directly to your uh, working tables as a cut list or, uh, or just a, a list that you want your employees to have. So it's all uh, information that exists. So it's kind of the uh, entering the 4.0 industry uh, world. Uh, you're, you're just going to use that data everywhere in your factory, uh, helping making a better window and uh, helping your employees working faster as well. Uh, another thing that you can do on the welder now, uh, you can uh, you could have uh, a drill that's been in, installed uh, between two heads uh, to do uh, your uh, mullion post uh, on your frame. So the, the three head drill uh, that only applies to casement frames. But if, uh, if you do have a, a welder that's dedicated to weld, uh, casement frames, uh, this could be a good add on as your uh, positioning your mullion as the window is assembled and uh, being held uh, at a square uh, inside the welder. So you know that the precision is going to be 100% uh, at that point. Uh, it, you could have uh, also, uh, if you have a three light, you could, the, the same system could be working, uh, making two different sets of holes on each side. Just keep in mind that if you're putting this uh, hardware between the two heads, you're making your mi minimum weld a little bit bigger. So if you're uh, going, going to be using the same welder for frame and sash, I would not recommend uh, having that uh, installed on, on a welder. Um, if, if now we're talking about uh, different types of uh, welder, if you uh, built a hybrid window or you're using uh, laminated uh, PVC, uh, there is a lot of new technologies around uh, the seamless welders uh, that, that are out there. Uh, it's not necessarily a technology that's, that has been well adapted to the North American window just yet, as the walls of our windows are much thinner than uh, what we see in Europe. Uh, but I have seen those work with uh, hybrid windows and laminated windows. They work very well. But it, uh, at the same time, it's a long cycle. So thinking about using the seamless welders on your regular window, white window factory, I would not recommend as you're uh, losing a lot of uh, time on the ma manufacturing. So if you're thinking about uh, cycles, you're gonna be on the high-speed welders, you're gonna be somewhere around one minute per cycle. And on uh, seamless welders that I've seen, throughout different factories, you're gonna be more around four minutes cycle. So you're thinking that your factory will, your factory output would be cut uh, by four. So it would not be an advantage uh, to do so. And uh, a good welder, a good corner cleaner these days is, is gonna be giving you the same, uh, same quality than a, than a seamless welder. That's uh, up to my 
knowledge and the, the way I think, but uh, just keep in mind that those products uh, do exist that are out there. Uh, they're just, just a matter of uh, finding the right solution for the different profiles you have. Uh, the other thing that you would have to keep in mind is that the tool change is much longer on one of those uh, seamless welders than on a regular welder. So if you, uh, just like most of uh, North American uh, fabricator, have uh, 20, 30, 40 different profiles uh, passing on the same uh, equipment, just think that you're going to have to be uh, down uh, a lot of times uh, doing uh, tool change-ups. So this is where I would uh, focus my mind uh, when you're looking at those equipment. Uh, next step, if you're, uh, if, if you're working on an automated uh, line, you're going to be looking at either a cooling station or uh, some companies do uh, use this time as a machining center. Uh, so there's uh, possibilities of adding uh, pre-location of hardware uh, on uh, the resting area. So if you're looking at uh, e uh, casement sash, you're going to be looking at positioning uh, keepers and snubbers. If you're looking at uh, casement uh, frames, you're going to be or uh, hung and slider frames, you're going to be looking at uh, pre-drilling mullions as well. So uh, like I said, you could be doing it on the welder, but you could also be doing it on, on the resting table. Uh, it's a matter of uh, precision. It's a matter of uh, gaining some speed down the line. You don't have to do it uh, on, on the saw. You don't have to do it uh, down the line uh, by an employee with uh, a gauge. Uh, so there's, uh, you're thinking plant ergonomy and uh, really uh, accuracy at that point. Uh, if you're looking at, um, I have seen some projects for uh, slider frame, uh, sorry, slider uh, sashes. Uh, you could do like pre-positioning of the locks, uh, handles, and things like that uh, on that same uh, station. So there's a lot of things that could be uh, added to one of those. Uh, if you're building um, European style windows, uh, the hinges location could be done on one of those machines as well. Uh, next step, you're gonna be going obviously to your corner cleaners. So uh, if I'm looking at uh, standalone uh, production, uh, there's a lot of um, questioning that goes around, should I go for a one head corner cleaner or uh, twin head corner cleaner. The first misconception that people have is that thinking that they're going to go with a twin head is going to be working twice as fast. But for most fabricators, uh, twin heads are uh, two axis corner cleaners instead of a single head corner cleaner is going to be a four axis. So this means that the four axis is going to be cleaning the top and bottom of the part uh, simultaneously and uh, if you're looking at uh, a twin head corner cleaner with two axes that means you're going to be cleaning top and then bottom so you're going to be looking at a longer cycle the the advantage that you're going to have towards a uh, twin head there is going to have that is going to be that you can uh, now have some uh, manufacturing done on those uh, corner cleaners so if you're dedicating a corner cleaner to uh, slider slash, uh, hung in slider slash, you're going to be able to do uh, pivots uh, location. You're going to be uh, doing a tilt latch uh, routing, uh, night latch. Those are things that can be uh, added to a twin head corner cleaner, but not to a single head corner cleaner. If you're uh, dedicating uh, one of those cleaners to uh, casement, as well, you're going to be able to do uh, rails, uh, hinges, um, operator arm uh, rails. I, so, I'm sorry, I said it. Uh, you're going to be able to do some uh, manufacturing on those corner cleaner as well, which is not going to be possible on a single head corner cleaner. But if you're only looking at uh, doing the clean, uh, just keep in mind that either a one head corner cleaner or a twin head corner cleaner is going to be giving you an output of somewhere around 225 to 250 uh, squares in one day, uh, depending on uh, what type of windows you're producing on the, those corner cleaners. 
Then if you're looking at uh, a pass-through line, you're gonna be looking at uh, pass-through corner cleaners. Biggest advantage of a uh, pass-through corner cleaner obviously is gonna be speed. Uh, you're uh, working at the same speed rate than uh, high-speed welders. So you're gonna be looking at somewhere around a minute cycle for all four corners. Uh, and you're gonna be able to integrate uh, a lot of uh, manufacturing at the same time. So you then you would not have to be choosing between uh, casement sash or uh, hung and slider sashes. You could be uh, prefabricating both of those on the same line. Uh, so no, uh, no dedication to a line is uh, mandatory at that point. Um, and uh, a, a lot more precise than all other corner cleaners as uh, you're gonna be measuring the part that comes down in the machine at the same time uh, before you start cleaning it. So if I'm taking, again, my example of uh, 1000 by 1000 uh, square, any good reason your welder is off, uh, the, the part goes into your corner cleaner and it should be 1000, but it's 999. Well, the, cor the corner cleaner is gonna adjust itself to the right measurements and uh, start start his cleaning. So you're not gonna have a, a, a clean that's gonna be off uh, of the corner instead if you're only uh, giving the information uh, to, to the machine that it would be a 1000 square. Uh, so those are things to, again, keep in mind, uh, ergonomy, uh, flexibility, and uh, the speed of a uh, pass-through line. Uh, is it really gonna be helping down the, the line of your, your factory? So uh, a lot of fabricator, uh, a lot of uh, machinery guys such as uh, us at JSA are usually stopping at that point uh, where uh, after the corner cleaner, it's kind of left to uh, the customer to uh, do the, the rest of his factory. Um, there's a lot of things that exist. There's a lot of technologies uh, that exist that uh, people have in mind that only European style window uh, can be uh, taken care of at that point. Uh, but uh, that's not true. We have adapted uh, those uh, systems to uh, the North American style uh, window. Uh, so easiest uh, way to uh, start helping your production, uh, assisted unloading. So you're thinking that you're not gonna have one employee unloading the corner cleaner table for, uh, for just one example. You could have a table that lifts the window and puts it into racks. So if you're thinking that you have a high speed welder, you have 400 squares coming out of the, the corner cleaner, uh, you're gonna have one employee that every minute has to take away one uh, square. Uh, so if he doesn't take the, 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 the window off the line, the whole line is gonna be stopped. So uh, if you're putting a system in place that un automatic, automatically unloads it, uh, it's gonna be much easier. Uh, so you're cutting down one, uh, one employee at that point, uh, you're gonna be loading racks, but you could also be uh, creating a whole chain uh, after the corner cleaner where uh, the exit, exit table would be uh, dragging the material to uh, assembly tables where uh, workers would be waiting on the next uh, part to come in front of them and do their work. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of technologies that exist, uh, also on tables to uh, assist uh, screwings and and uh, and things like that. So just keep in mind that those uh, workflow uh, technologies are not just there for uh, the European style window. Obviously, if you're building uh, one of those uh, tilt and turn window, there's uh, something that makes it easier on you as the hardware is holding by itself. So there, there's a little bit further that you can push that technology, um, but it's not only dedicated to uh, this type of window uh, as well. Uh, IG sorting system. Uh, IG sorting system, I uh, have seen a lot of those uh, systems in Europe. Uh, where um, basically the workers are assembling the sash and as they scan the, the part that ha they have in front of them, uh, the system is bringing to them the next uh, IG unit that they need uh, to assemble, assemble in their window. So no uh, confusion at looking into the racks at where the, the next IG 
is. Uh, you're going to have a, a, an inspection that's being done uh, at the beginning of the day as you're receiving the, the, all the IGs as well. Uh, so you're avoiding a lot of mistakes, a lot of downtimes, uh, a, a lot of uh, employees looking for their material as well. So I do have a layout uh, that I'm, I'm going to be showing you right here. I'm sorry. Uh, all right. Okay, so... This layout here is uh, quite simple. Uh, that's showing you uh, how you can automate a factory. This, uh, this one uh, example here, it's a company that builds uh, somewhere around 100 windows a day. So not uh, a huge factory, uh, but as you can see, it's uh, very low in uh, employees. So if you're looking at the top of the screen, you're gonna have uh, one employee loading the welder uh, unloading to a uh, single head corner cleaner with turning station. And if you're thinking that a frame is on it at this point, uh, what the frame is going to do is it's going to be automatically unloaded by the buffer that's on the left of the, of the screen. Then it's going to make its way to the tables that are uh, in the middle uh, of the screen. Employees are going to be assembling the frame, putting it back to the buffer. Buffer is going to bring the frame all the way down on the screen to the uh, vertical uh, table there. Uh, then the sash is going to be coming out of the welder and going directly on the last assembly table at the bottom of the screen. Employee there is going to be doing his assembly on the sash. Sash is going to be automatically unloaded to a magazine of uh, different sashes. So the last employee that you see at the bottom of the screen there uh, he's gonna. He receives this the frame, turns around uh, after he uh, scans the the frame that's in front of him. There's gonna be light coming, uh, lighting up on on the floor, telling him exactly which sashes are going for that frame. And at the same time as he installs the sashes into the frame, the the last machine you're gonna see on the right side is a glass sorting system. This is gonna be bringing the next. IGs that are going into those sashes. So you can think that this employee that's uh, assembling, doing the final assembly of the window is only working somewhere around a 10 feet by 10 feet area. And he just he's just receiving the material instead of looking for it. Uh, so there's a, a big gain in, uh, in time and uh, you can add uh, lifting systems to those. Uh, like you could have an operator arm uh, to uh, lift the glasses and uh, help the employees. There's a lot of thinking that can, a lot of things that can be done to uh, improve the, all the workstations. So the biggest challenge we're going to have uh, with those would be all the different sizes of profiles that we have to go to work with where the typical European uh, window, the frame and sashes are not so far apart uh, as uh, size. So uh, it's gonna be uh, easier for them to uh, create those, uh, those system, but those system can also be adapted to the North American window as well. Um, next, next thing I wanted to uh, talk to you guys about uh, is uh, automated uh, paint chambers. Uh, I did have a webinar dedicated to those, so I'm not going to be doing the whole uh, nine yards uh, around that. But uh, just keep in mind that uh, there is technologies out there to be working with either squares or bars. Uh, this one uh, layout on the screen right now is, uh, is done for bars. Uh, the reason why I put this one is that uh, I know that uh, the Western... Uh, fabricator, if I'm thinking about uh, Toronto to Vancouver, is uh, painting more bars than boxes as Quebec is more painting uh, boxes instead. Uh, but keep in mind that uh, this technology can be adapted to either boxes or bar. Uh, you do have to do a preparation on uh, the bars or the boxes. You have to tape the areas you, you don't want to be painting. Um, but this is going to be a system that's going to be uh, painting with a robot. 
So a lot of uh, gaining time there. You, the employees don't have to be uh, trained to do painting, where uh, if you only have a, a carousel system with one employee, you would have to have to, someone that knows paint uh, be, to be doing the job. Now you're looking at just a general employee that's just capable of uh, loading and unloading the line. So much easier job, uh, much easier training uh, that can be done. If you're pushing the bar painting a little bit further, uh, there is uh, technologies out there that allows you not to uh, mask, uh, use tapes uh, to uh, paint the bars. Uh, but the problem I've seen with those systems is uh, usually uh, there's not a lot of uh, automation behind it. It's usually one bar at a time and the employees have to be uh, uh, working with the, the, the wet paint uh, bars and, and loading them to racks. But uh, after doing some research, I did find some uh, companies out there that are uh, offering some systems that are going to be uh, working with uh, the automating those uh, process. So if you're looking at uh, your screen right now, uh, you're going to have uh, on the left, you're going to be loading bars. The machine is going to be painting and using uh, like a, some uh, systems to block the paint from going on the faces you don't want to be painted. And it's going to be unloading to a resting uh, area. So that's going to be automated. So the employees at the end are really unloading parts that are dry instead of working with uh, wet paint. Uh, so there is process out there. Uh, that exists that you can uh, be improving your uh, your factory uh, uh, painting and if even though if you're looking at the painting bars uh, there's there is also technologies out there uh, that exist to uh, do a better weld with uh, uh, painted painted bars when you're not painting boxes uh, to avoid uh, doing touch-ups so those are all things that uh, we could be addressing together if you want to give me a a call after this uh, presentation. So I'm, uh, I'm inviting you guys to uh, take a look at the different webinars we, we did uh, throughout the year. Uh, we will be doing more webinars uh, throughout the, so we're doing one every month, uh, one month in French, one month in English, and we're going through different subjects in uh, much more details. So I'm inviting you to, uh, to check out our uh, YouTube channel for the ones that have been done and uh, stay tuned for the next one coming up. And uh, once again, I wanna thank uh, Fenestration Canada for the inv invitation to participate in the to, uh, this year's uh, Windor. Thank you, Martin. And I think uh, we'll see some uh, other, uh, we can see some other of your uh, webinars in the hub uh, within the marketplace. I think that we posted those, uh, so they're in there. Um, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to talk again this, uh, this year. Thank you. Thank you.